So I saw this tweet yesterday from Preston Sprinkle. Thoughts on this? Right wing, Republican only Christianity has contributed significantly to younger people deconstructing from the faith, sort of presenting it as a debate resolution, I guess. Uh, well, it seems to me this is pretty obviously the case, and it's not a new thing, I should add. The alignment of evangelicalism with the Republican Party platform goes back to at least 1980 with the formation of the moral majority. And ever since then, that has led to evangelicals becoming then narrowly politically partisan and specifically focused on a subset of wedge issues like being against abortion and gay marriage. And this has really harmed the witness of evangelical Christianity. Back in 1997, uh, Philip Yancey published the book, What's So Amazing About Grace? And he talks about when he would sit on the airplanes, airplanes beside people, and he would strike up conversations with them, and he would ask them, what comes to mind when you hear the word evangelical? And it would always be something negative, like, well, they're against abortion. Well, they're against gay people or gay rights and so on. Of course, gay marriage as such wasn't even on the radar in the 1990s. But uh, evangelicals were known for being just against certain things, and that's all they were known for. Uh, Philip Yancey laments that never once did anybody associate evangelicalism with love or grace, these central hallmarks of a healthy Christian community. And that, to me, is pretty damning. And so uh, what Preston Sprinkle is getting on with here, however, I think is an added level of troublesome, let's put it that way, because it's no longer that evangelicals in the United States are broadly aligned and have collapsed Christian identity into their Republican Party affiliation, but the very affiliation of the Republican Party itself has been collapsed into Donald Trump who is a malignant narcissist, a misogynist, a racist, um, someone who is a convicted felon 34 times over. Trump University was shut down as a scam. The Trump Foundation was shut down as a scam. The man is a criminal. He is lawless. He shows authoritarian tendencies. He has a long history of love affairs, uh, not just with various women that he's cheated on his three spouses with, but also love affairs with dictators around the world, from Putin to Duterte to Orban. Uh, he's a pretty awful person. Uh, and when you now collapse evangelical Christian identity, not only to the Rep Republican Party platform, but you collapse that into Donald Trump, Yes, that is going to alienate people and repulse people and repel people from Christianity. That's a pretty obvious reason, a catalyst for Christians now leaving the faith. Well, I probably wouldn't have bothered to comment on this tweet, except that then I saw Natasha Crane, or Tron, I'm not sure how to pronounce her last name. I'm going to go with Crane, but she's an evangelical apologist, uh, and she tweeted Preston Sprinkle's tweet, but then she gave her own commentary which was, I would say, scathing in response to Preston Sprinkle's proposed debate resolution. Let's take a look at what she writes. She says, left-leaning evangelicals like to promote this narrative that young people's dislike of conservative politics and the association with Christianity causes them to walk away from the faith. But the following should be noted. Okay, let's stop there for a moment. Note the way that she frames it here is simply the association of Christianity with, quote unquote, conservative politics. Now, there are two flaws in her reasoning here. The first flaw, I believe, is that it's not simply that Christianity is associated with conservatism as such. It's that Conservative evangelicals have collapsed Christian identity into their specifically Republican Party. And that is the nefarious and toxic brew that people are responding to. The second thing is she says this is conservative politics. Well, not really. What Republicanism is today in its expression is profoundly different in on multiple levels from historic uh, conservatism. And the way you can see that is from the very fact that people like Dick Cheney and Liz Cheney 
uh, have want nothing to do with Donald Trump and his current iteration of the Republican Party. I mean, there are things like uh, a withdrawal from international affairs. There are things like uh, taking a weak stance against dictatorial states like Putin, where Trump has repeatedly spoken in support of Putin and praised Putin uh, and the uh, Russians, things like that. Or another example where they advocate for, rather than a free market, for intervening against corporations and punitively against corporations that don't agree with them, which, by the way, is something Ron DeSantis has also been doing at the state level in Florida against corporations like uh, Walt Disney Corporation. So this is not what we would historically call conservatism. But anyway, the, that's my uh, beef with the first paragraph. From there, we, let's read it on. This claim is often made with the underlying assumption that if this is true, there's necessarily a problem with Christians being primarily aligned with conservative political positions. First of all, the, the way that Crane talks here is as if Christian is the same thing as conservative American evangelical, and it just isn't. Christians are and have always been represented right across the political spectrum, and that is as it should be. When you begin to speak as if to be Christian just is to support this political party, that is exactly the source of the problem. Uh, and she is just continuing to perpetuate that problem by continuing to speak as if to be Christian, simplicator just is to support the Republican Party. But then she says this, that doesn't follow. People walk away from the faith for all kinds of reasons. Christians aren't responsible for removing every barrier that causes people to turn away simply because they're turning away. Otherwise, we would just accept everything the world accepts to achieve some kind of perfect retention rate. There is certainly a moment of truth here. Um, if, for example, you were a Baptist church, a largely Caucasian Baptist church in the 1950s in Alabama, and you began preaching the integration of the races, denouncing Jim Crow and racism, you would likely see a significant drop in your attendance. But that would not be a measure of your faithfulness. In fact, the more people left your church it might well be an indication that you are being faithful to the encompassing embrace of the gospel for all people. Conversely, if you continue to maintain a segregationist line, you might have a very high or perfect retention rate, but it doesn't mean you're faithful. I, I get that. But the assumption that a Christianity that has collapsed in the Republican Party, which itself is centered on the personality cult of Donald Trump, to, to equate that with a faithful prophetic witness is, to my mind, profoundly delusional. Reading on, in the case of politics, given that biblical positions on key issues clearly align more with a conservative platform than a progressive one, if young people turn away from faith due to conservative associations, they probably didn't have a biblical worldview to begin with. Note how baldly question-begging this is. Crane assumes, well, if you are biblical, then obviously you do support a conservative platform. And if you don't support a conservative platform, then obviously you're not biblical. And that is precisely the assumption, again, that should be challenged. But note that she assumes it because she's already collapsed Christian identity and evangelical Christian identity into Republican Party, which is centered on Donald Trump. And because she's collapsed them, she can't even consider that possibly someone who is, quote, a left-leaning evangelical actually might be more biblical on a particular issue. I think it's pretty easy to see how tendentious this is just by considering examples. How do people like Donald Trump talk about refugees and immigrants? Uh, think about the Muslim ban uh, in Trump's term in office. Think about how he implemented a child separation policy, which is a violation of international law. 
where he sought to provide a deterrent for new people claiming refugee status, which they have a right to do under international law. He sought to deter them from attempting to claim refugee status by when people would arrive in the country, forcibly removing children from their parents, which rightly has been called a form of torture. And even to this day in 2024, there are some children who have never been reunited with their parents when they were separated under the Trump administration. I don't have words for how evil and counter-Christian an action like that is. And to suggest that that is more closely aligned with quote unquote biblical positions than somebody who would denounce that as a crime against humanity or torture, it just shows how delusional someone like Crane is. The way that Trump repeatedly uses othering rhetoric to talk about immigrants, refugees, anybody who comes from a country or a place he doesn't like. Note that Trump never complains about immigrants coming from Norway. He specifically said, as I noted in a previous video, uh, he referred to countries like Haiti and African countries as shitholes. And he said, why can't we have more immigrants from Norway? So his issue is not simply immigration. It's immigration from the wrong places. Think how unbiblical that is. Do you want to tell me that having no restrictions on guns or on semi-automatic weapons is obviously the more biblical perspective? What about a social safety net for the poor? What about accepting the science on climate change or vaccines? To go on down the line, it is so absurd and, again, tendentious to just assume at the outset that your views which you've collapsed Christian identity into the uh, Republican Party or obviously the more biblical ones. And note one more thing. The very language of, quote unquote, the biblical position is itself a chimera. This is an illusion. What people like Crane are doing is simply baptizing what their personal convictions are by calling them biblical and thereby replace, placing them beyond critical scrutiny. And really what a Christian should be concerned with is not, quote unquote, the biblical position, but rather the Christian position. Now, a Christian will be informed by scripture in the Protestant tradition as sola scriptura, which means scripture is the norming norm for theological reflection. But your views on things aren't exhausted by the Bible. They are informed by all sorts of other sources or uh, resources of data or information which you bring into reflective equilibrium as you read scripture and form your doctrinal positions on various issues. The fact that Crane talks about having the biblical position or a biblical worldview is just evidence of the evangelical reductionism that thinks theological method simply resides in reading the Bible and citing Bible verses, which it doesn't. There's so much more involved in it than that. Okay, then she says this. The order of events for a given individual is more like this. One, accepts unbiblical secular views on political issues like abortion, gender ideology, and sexuality, two, adopts a corresponding disgust for Christians who advocate politically for biblical views that align with a conservative platform, three, deconstructs claiming it's because a Republican-only Christianity, uh, it's because of Republican-only Christianity. And then she says, bottom line, if they're walking away from the Lord because too many Christians vote conservatively, they almost certainly didn't have a biblical worldview to begin with. So this is the, the final kick out the door. Is like, if, if you object to the fact that we collapse Christian identity into the affiliation with this personality cult on this immoral man, Donald Trump, um, well, then obviously you were never really a Christian to begin with. This is, a, this is just delusional, and it shows to me the depth of moral rot and intellectual rot within this evangelical tradition. I just want to, just to conclude, highlight a couple of things from these points, one, two, and three, uh, that Crane raises. On number one, I'm just going to say this. So she talks about gender ideology. Uh, the one thing I want to say here is this. So two things, actually. I think I'll say two things. The first thing is that gender dysphoria is a reality. The fact that there are some people who have a deeply traumatizing experience for years of sensing a non-alignment 
between their birth sex or their sex assigned at birth and their self identity. Uh, that is a reality. Now, in the old days, evangelicals, when people were identified as gay, of course, what the evangelicals would do would be, well, we're going to fix that. We're going to um, give you some sort of therapy, reparative therapy, uh, and to make you not gay anymore. And that kind of reparative therapy is now universally recognized to be a disaster. It doesn't work. It only further traumatizes people. The question then is, how do you... Uh, engage with people, let's say, who are same-sex attracted, and how do they think about and live out the same-sex attractions that they have? I mean, that's the, the issue of same-sex attraction. Now, I just want to segue back to um, gender dysphoria. It's the same question here. Um, if you can't remove that sense of gender dysphoria and the cognitive dissonance that comes with it, what then do you do? If you are suicidal because uh, you understand yourself to be a different gender than your birth sex. What do you do? These are difficult, complex, therapeutic questions. One very small thing in the midst of it all is this conversation. If a person requests as one way to ameliorate their gender dysphoria and trauma is that you use pronouns when you refer to them that align with their self-understanding of their gender. Uh, is that something you should do as a hospitality to them to help them minimize their own trauma at experiencing gender dysphoria? And my simple response is this. Christians can disagree on how to respond therapeutically and by way of hospitality to people who are experiencing severe gender dysphoria. To place one particular view on that issue as being at the heart of Christian identity is such a distortion of what Christianity is. Christianity is centered on the Apostles' Creed. It's not centered on taking a particular stance on the use of pronouns. People like Crane have so distorted and corrupted Christianity with their understanding, their specific understanding, and they major on the minors. And this is exactly the kind of reason that people end up walking away, because they see people from this community othering, dehumanizing, objectifying, human beings in their midst as illegals, spreading false rumors and lies about them, like they eat cats and dogs, um, and all doing this in emulation of a, a personality cult centered on a man who has, is as much profoundly anti-Christian as one could imagine. And yes, they end up walking away. To say that those people, it's now their fault that they quote unquote apostatized from the corrupt version of Christianity that you prevent presented them is I think precisely an example of again why people walk away and it does show the depth of the corruption and the moral rod that is central to much of North American or American evangelicalism today.